All right, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the video on Paleolithic and Neolithic man. Okay. So if you're in Mr. Nolan's class, or maybe you're in Miss Bastian's class, or whoever's class, you might be hearing me for the first time. So I am Mr. Grimslin. I'm going to be kind of narrating, teaching over these videos. Okay. So if you're in my class, you're going to hear my voice a lot, just like you've been hearing it. And then you might also hear maybe Mr. Nolan or somebody else from uh, from the school doing these videos. Okay. So that being said, we're going to launch into Paleolithic and Neolithic man. We see a picture of a caveman here. Now, what the heck does Paleolithic and Neolithic mean? All right. So Paleolithic man. These are the human beings that are walking around the earth from about 2.5 million BCE to 8,000 BCE years ago. Okay. So this is Remember, the years go f kind of backwards. It starts at 2.5 million, and then it goes gets lower and lower until we get to zero. And then from zero, after that, the years are CE. So BCE is before zero. CE is after zero. All right? So this is a long time ago, obviously. What does the word paleo mean? Okay? So when you see paleolithic, the first part of that is paleo. Okay? So the first part of that is right here, paleo. Okay? So what does the word paleo mean? it means old so this is the old stone age okay so why is this important well when you think about paleolithic man you have to think about this is a more simple version of man okay it's a very simple life so it's a lot of um, hunting and gathering very simple things um, using rocks as tools um, they do figure out how to make fire so it's not an advanced state of humans okay when you think paleo, you got to think simple, especially when you're comparing it with Neolithic man. So Neolithic is a more modern version. Okay, this is 8,000 BCE to 3,000 BCE. Okay, so the word Neo means new. If you've ever seen the Matrix, you know what Neo is, okay? New. Why is this word important? Well, Neolithic man lived a more modern lifestyle. So if paleo was old, Okay, Neolithic is a little more new, a little more modern, um, and they're going to have some of the things that we identify with today, and we're going to go into that in a second. All right, so let's talk about Paleolithic man. All right, so what are the characteristics of the Paleolithic era? So remember, we call the Paleolithic era the Old Stone Age, okay? Old Stone Age. Paleolithic, old. All right, so the first thing you got to understand about Paleolithic man is they are hunter-gatherer societies. What the heck does that mean? Okay, that means that typically the men that live in these groups, they're going to go out and hunt. Okay, they're going to go out and find food, find meat that they can hunt and that they can kill so that they can feed themselves and the rest of the people in their group. While they're out hunting, maybe the women or maybe the older people in the tribe would be kind of collecting any sort of grasses or berries or fruits or anything of that nature. Okay, so together, that's how they find their food source. Okay, that being the case, there's no animals that just sit in place every day. Nobody, no animal will just sit there and not, not do anything. Animals move in herds. Animals move in packs. Okay, so it's important to understand that hunter-gatherer societies are always on the move, searching for food, searching for water sources. Okay, if we remember from the last video... Um, early man originated in Africa, and as we know, not a lot of water sources in Africa, so they had to kind of move. They were searching for water, they were following herds, and eventually early man kind of spread out all across the globe. Okay? That's kind of a simplified version of what happens, but it's a good way to understand it. And of course, they're going to live in clans. Alright? So, a clan is kind of a group of people, maybe a smaller group of people, because, let's be honest, with these small hunter-gatherer societies, it's difficult for them to feed a large number of people. Okay, so they have small clans. Probably one of the most important things about the Paleolithic era, okay, the Old Stone Age, people are going to learn how to use and make fire. Okay, so we see maybe a possible Paleolithic camp here. Uh, fire, we see a simplified tools, um, simple sticks using to roast meat. Okay, so man's going to figure out that they can eat uh, meat if they roast it um, and it'll basically be good for them. So they learn how to use and make fire. 
And the last couple characteristics of the Paleolithic era are that everything is simple. Okay, so when you think Paleo, you think simple. Simple weapons are rocks. Okay, so we see a rock here. This might have been used as some sort of weapon in the Paleolithic era. Um, sharpened sticks, okay. Not advanced uh, tools with metals or anything like that, just very simple. They will develop an oral language, which is important because early people needed to be able to communicate with one another. And they're going to create cave art. So it is interesting to think that although these people are simple, these early humans are simple, they are able to kind of create some interesting artwork. They are able to express themselves. Um, and it, it is part of archaeology to try and figure out what they drew and maybe why they drew it. All right, the Neolithic era. So we said Neolithic means the New Stone Age. Okay, so the number one important development that you have to understand, very, very important, is the development of agriculture. Okay, so what is agriculture? Agriculture is farming. So that these early men are eventually going to be able to figure out that they can domesticate plants and animals. So they can farm on one spot. Okay, so they can create their own food. Now, farming is easier than hunting and gathering. You just plant the seeds you make sure they're up to, you you know, upkeep it and it everything is working smoothly and eventually you're going to harvest the plants and you can kind of grind them and do the things you need to do or you can just eat them, okay? So man is going to figure out how to use agriculture, okay? They're also going to, instead of chasing animals around, they're going to domesticate them, which means kind of tame them, keep them under control. So they're going to keep animals in one area so they don't have to chase them around. And they'll let them breed, they'll let them mate, they'll let them kind of roam around and they'll use them for maybe milk or they'll use the eggs or maybe they'll eat the meat, but they'll make sure that they still have more to use. So they figure out how to eat food and how to create food and how to make more food for themselves. They don't have to work so hard at getting food. So in addition to agriculture, that's clearly the number one factor of the Neolithic era, but also the domestication of plants and animals, advanced tools, okay, so we see advanced tools here, we see kind of metal attached to sticks, we see a grindstone maybe, this might be some sort of axe, okay, so it's no longer just a rock and a sharpened stick, it's more advanced now, okay. And then we're going to see pottery, okay, weaving skills, more artistic pursuits. So now that we don't have to spend all our time hunting and gathering, we have more time to devote to maybe the arts, maybe pottery, maybe crafting. We can now hold items. We can carry more stuff. It's good for everybody. All right. So the key historical event that separates the old from the new is the agricultural revolution. Okay. So old Stone Age, there's no farming. There's no agriculture. Okay. New Stone Age, the agricultural revolution. We can now farm. Agriculture means farming. So why is this such a big deal? The extra food allows people to stay in one place and settle. Okay. We have food now. We don't need to be chasing the herds, trying to find water supplies. We can go next to a water supply. We can settle down there and we can plant food that's going to continue to regenerate and continue to feed us for a long time. So now that that's the case, we have a food surplus, okay? This means that we have extra food. We can kind of ration for ourselves. We can provide for ourselves and our families now, okay? And this allow allows for what's called specialization of labor, okay? Kind of a complicated concept, but here it is. Now that we can farm in one place, we don't need everyone to do that. Farming is relatively simple, okay? So there's a lot of people in a tribe. Now our tribe can get bigger because we have more food, right? More food means more people in our tribe. Now that we have more people who aren't worried about getting food, they have time to kind of pursue arts. They have time to make laws. They have time to build governments, build cities, okay? Um, all these things that you associate with modern civilization, okay? Cities, trading with other people, creating things, creating tools, um, art, pottery, all these things, they can now work with each other. Okay, so once these clans start settling down and getting bigger and bigger, they start interacting with other clans, okay, 
And now we have kind of the basis for modern civilization, which we'll get into in the next unit. All right, so remember, you can always pause these videos and rewind them if you need to. Otherwise, thanks for listening.